Ian Dior has been releasing music under this artist's name since early 2019 when he was found and discovered by Internet Money. He did go by another name in 2017 to 2018, which was Olmo, but for the purpose of this video, we have so much to break down that I'm not going to really look too much into that right now. We might end up saving that for the future. But if you're just finding Ian now or you're just interested in what led him to the point where he is now in the current era we have, this video essay will cover all all of that. Ian Dior's Nothing's Ever Good Enough officially released on all DSPs on April 12th of 2019, but there's a little bit more to this that you might not be aware of. When Ian originally got signed by Internet Money, he was originally exclusively a SoundCloud artist. Up until April 12th, when they actually released these songs on all streaming platforms, Ian exclusively released all his songs on SoundCloud. You can look at the date for when stuff started getting released originally, and Internet Money started rolling Ian out on February. February 1st of 2019 and that's when Cutthroat officially released which is the first song that Ian dropped. You can follow through the beginning of his SoundCloud tracks and work all the way up and even find some drops that didn't even make all DSPs which includes Stressed Out with Trevor Daniel. This exclusively only released on SoundCloud because they couldn't get Trevor Daniel's verse cleared from his label for this song to be on Nothing's Ever Good Enough but you can tell that Nothing's Ever Good Enough released on April 12th 2019 because that's when Crash My Whip released as well. And when Nothing's Ever Good Enough originally released, the only new track was Crash My Whip. It just consisted of all of Ian's old SoundCloud songs, getting them onto all platforms, and that was basically the purpose of Nothing's Ever Good Enough, and the project basically just consisted of everything that Ian had previously released on SoundCloud, plus one new track. Not counting Industry Plant, Nothing's Ever Good Enough is probably one of the most nostalgic or iconic eras for Ian, because this era is looked back at so positively for a few reasons. Ian got into the scene when the whole emo rap thing was really at a peak. I mean, I know that it was after Juice and everything, but for the most part in 2019, there were so many industry plants during that time period and just other artists trying to do what was happening with Ian. And the fact that Ian had enough industry push and enough backing to be able to make it out of that era is honestly kind of impressive if you ask me. And you can really tell just by listening to this project when Ian was only 19 making these songs, how much his lyrics and just style has changed over time. Time. I definitely think that Nothing's Ever Good Enough songs sound more like an actual SoundCloud era or more like a SoundCloud rapper made them compared to everything else Ian has released since then and this might be a factor to why this era is so nostalgic for Ian's community and fan base. <laughs> Industry Plant is Ian's debut album that released on November 8th of 2019 and this kind of changed a lot of stuff for Ian because not only did this project have different sounds and different styles for Ian but it also kind of branched him out to the point where he was able to work with artists like Travis Barker which ended up playing a huge part in his career later down the line. We'll come back to that but looking at Industry Plant as a whole it's kind of crazy what really happened. I mean the lead single to this album was what what is real and then they released Gone Girl as the second single and from that point on we ended up getting Pouring officially released but the album went through a few changes and it kind of got pushed back a little bit during that time period to where it ended up releasing in winter of 2019 and the album really pushed the barriers for Ian if you ask me. The lyrics might not be necessarily much different from Nothing's Ever Good Enough. It's still the heartbreak and just some of the more basic lyrics that you would expect from Ian and an artist during this time period but I think the real change here came from from the sound of the songs. We saw Ian go on more of a pop route with stuff like Problems and What Is Real, but there's also some more like kind of indie pop hits on here. I think if you listen to stuff like Lately or Needed or Searching even, all of these songs sound a lot different than even stuff what Ian's releasing now. And this is honestly probably looked at and regarded as one of the best, if not Ian's best project that he's still released to this date. The build up to this album was also insane because we pretty much had a snippet for every single song song minus like flowers Taz basically kind of kept us all in the loop throughout the whole album rollout and the whole process of the creation of the album there's tons of snippets from this time period that didn't end up releasing but for the most part the album consists of 15 tracks and these 15 tracks were basically just the most wanted snippets during that time period I think dark side never is enough songs like that were definitely really wanted during this time period and obviously as you can see they all officially released when the album came out in late 2019.
I'm Gone is where stuff starts to get a little bit different because for the two previous projects, Nothing's Ever Good Enough and Industry Plant, those were executively produced and co-produced by Internet Money and Taz Taylor. They basically got the say in the track list, how the albums were structured, really everything. And this is honestly a reason why I personally think that Ian ended up leaving Internet Money and why he went out on his own and kind of got the idea for his next album or mixtape, which was I'm Gone. I'm Gone's rollout technically started I guess you can consider with Good Day which released at the very beginning of 2020 and then it obviously continued on to the point where we got sick and tired with MGK and Travis Barker. Now I don't think Ian gets enough credit for the fact that sick and tired was really kind of one of MGK's introductions into the pop punk scene as well. I do know that he released I Think I'm Okay but for the most part if you ask me Ian took a big risk by releasing something like this that he had no idea how his fan base was going to respond to it and if you look at it on Spotify it's one of Ian's most streamed songs to this date. It was honestly a great move for him to release it when he did. It released right before or during quarantine and it kind of just gave Ian a whole new look and a whole new sound and honestly introduced him to a whole different kind of audience that he probably hadn't even had fans from those fan bases previously. I'm Gone did have a little bit of a rough rollout just because it kind of released during such a weird time in the world but after everything was said and done we ended up getting the actual project itself on June 12th of 2020 and at this point Ian had honestly been a really consistent artist. I'm Gone is probably looked at as one of his worst projects in the community if you compare it to everything else he's released previously and now with the newer stuff like On to Better Things but overall looking at I'm Gone it really was a shift and a change in Ian because he didn't have internet money kind of picking and helping him with the production and the track list for the project. While we did get some throwaways from Ian's time with internet money like Runaway kid for the most part it kind of showed us a whole new side we got some pop punk ian with sick and tired and some different styled stuff with like shameless but we also got hip-hop and rap ian with prospect which honestly kind of was a big step out for ian yet again kind of like how industry plant did previously but i'm gone even pushed that more and kind of got ian to the point where he is today because there is still songs on i'm gone that really helped ian out like sick and tired i obviously mentioned already and prospect was honestly a good hit for ian as well the song is certified gold right now and even if this isn't anyone's favorite Ian project or we don't look at it the most fondly compared to some other things, I don't think it's a bad project whatsoever and I think for what it was supposed to do, Stand Out is something that kind of branched Ian off from internet money into his own artist. I think it does do that very well. After I'm Gone released, we honestly got to such a weird era for Ian. This is looked at as probably the worst time period to be an Ian fan because after he released I'm Gone, we only got one more song in 2020 which was Holding On, which is technically considered I think still here era, but for the most part this was supposed to be a single to the pop album that Ian was going to release sometime either in 2020 or 2021, and then obviously that didn't end up happening. Ian just kind of went silent and didn't really do anything until in 2021, he did end up releasing the Still Here EP in April, which consisted of Don't Want to Believe and Shots in the Dark with Trippy Red. And at this point, Ian had been a little more active in his fan base, and he told us that the pop album that he had been working on previously was scrapped, and that he was going to be working on Nothing's Ever Good Enough too. Now, there's a lot more to dive into about this whole time period, and I have a whole documentary on my second channel that really just covers everything that happened and led from the OG pop album to Still Here to Nothing's Ever Good Enough. To to On to Better Things. I will leave it listed in the description down below if you guys want to check that out. But Still Here was honestly one of the worst points in Ian's career and honestly one of the worst points to be an Ian fan. While I don't think Shots in the Dark and Don't Want to Believe are bad, it was just such an annoying time to be an Ian fan because he wasn't dropping and then when he finally did drop it was just two songs and that kind of just meant that he wasn't going to be releasing again for a while which did turn out to be true. This time period also doesn't have anything of officially released from it really other than holding on shots in the dark and don't want to believe it has nothing to it really so you can't even look at it like a really good progression for Ian because these songs don't really have a lot of substance to them and they don't really do much different other than just kind of showcase a little bit more of the pop side of Ian and then a little bit of some nothing's ever good enough throwback with the trippy song on it but other than that it doesn't really do much for anyone I don't think I know that there's a lot of throwaways and leaked songs from this time period there's tons of 
Spanish songs leaked from this time. There's tons of pop songs. You can find them all if you want to get a feel for what those albums were supposed to be like, the original pop album and Nothing's Ever Good Enough 2. But overall, in my opinion, this was the worst time period for Ian. On to Better Things had an over two year wait for it to release because of everything that happened previously and just the whole confusion going on with Ian scrapping things and everything. It took us over two years to get Ian's sophomore project, but we finally did end up getting it on January 21st of 2022. Ian started the rollout for On to Better Things with V12 that released in the summer or kind of near the end of 2021, and he continued it with Let You in November of 2021, and then obviously he topped off the new year with On to Better Things. Just like Industry Plan, this album consists of 15 tracks and quite honestly I think it serves the same purpose as Industry Plan. The album is 15 songs and consists of a lot of the fan wanted snippets at the time. It has complicated on it, it has regret, and it even has a couple unheards and different styled songs like Thought It Was, stuff that we necessarily weren't sure would be on this album, ended up on this project. I think that On to Better Things is looked at as a great time period for Ian music wise, but if you look at it from kind of just like Ian's career path leading up to this I don't really think it's that fondly looked upon just because there was so many different release dates for this project we were supposed to get it in summer of 2021 and then the end of 2021 and it just kept getting delayed and delayed we were never getting a single for it Ian went back and forth on what the single should be it honestly was just such a weird time and honestly quite annoying of a time to be a fan of Ian but I think that the music did turn out to be really good and I don't necessarily know if the project was worth that long of a wait but I do really enjoy the album and there's so many songs on it that I still listen to all the time and I think that On to Better Things is no doubtably Ian's most versatile project he's released yet. On to Better Things doesn't only feature high quality music on it but it has different varieties. You have some pop Ian on here which is honestly the best released pop Ian that I think there is. There's also some pop punk on here and there's even some throwbacks to stuff like Nothing's Ever Good Enough and industry plant with songs like complicated that I think Ian did try to kind of please everybody with this album to the point where everybody would kind of think it was worth the wait and I do think Ian did want the album to turn out this way as well and I think he made a good choice with the 15 tracks he did pick for this album the last era that we are currently in is the Rebirth era, supposedly. Keep in mind that this might end up changing because the album name might be different, but this honestly is sounding like the best era to be an Ian fan, if you ask me. Ian has been super active on social media. He's been playing tons and tons of new snippets for us recently, and I'm kind of hearing some of my favorite Ian songs ever that he's been playing. I think that Friends, a snippet that he's played recently, and the new single he has coming, Live Fast, Die Numb, are some of my favorite sound Ian songs so far. Obviously, they're not out yet, so I don't want to go too much into that, but for what Ian says he's been doing by going to the studio all the time, he's sobered up, and he wants to drop again next month, and possibly we end up getting this album or mixtape at the end of this year or sometime this year. I think that if all of this does turn out to be true and we get it, that this is probably going to be the best era for Ian, because On to Better Things was honestly a great project. I don't know if I would rank it higher than Industry Plant. I do think that On to Better Things has tons of great great songs on it that I still listen to so if we get another album or project back to back with even more great songs on it then this will have to be at least comparable to 2019 Ian. It will definitely be 2020 and 2021 Ian. It sounds like Ian's kind of using a little bit more pop punk influence in some of the songs he's making but he's still keeping pop tracks going with stuff like Saddest Soundtrack and Friends. You can definitely still hear that influence as well and he's even doing more rap stuff. I haven't necessarily heard any sad rap songs like nothing's ever good enough Ian but I don't think that's a bad thing I don't think Ian can really recreate that sound like what he tried to do with stuff like complicated and I don't think he needs to that sound isn't really popular anymore and while he does have fans that probably still want him to do that there's a good enough of leaks and released music from that time period that I think you still have to let Ian grow as an artist and change up his style and I think that we're kind of hearing that even with some of these newer rap songs he's been previewing for us they don't sound like I'm gone Ian but they also don't sound like nothing ever good enough Ian. They honestly sound more like a fusion or a mix between the On to Better Things voice with some of the I'm Gone beats if you ask me but I think we're honestly in the best era for Ian so far. I think that if he sticks true to his word and starts releasing some of this stuff and he just stays consistent again and we get good quality music that this is probably one of the best times to be a fan of Ian.